Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with RSU TV at Rogers State University in Oklahoma. Today we are chatting with Pamela Ballard, Chief Executive Officer of the Community Service Council, who has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Pam, for joining us today. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. So you deal with some of the most stressed people uh, on the planet, people yes. who have lost their homes, who are homeless, and who really need support. They're, they're at the end of, of their line, and you provide them with hope. Talk about the work that you do. Yes, it's very rewarding work. It is also, as you mentioned, very, very stressful work, but it is, um, it's our calling, we believe, to provide hope to those who, who are feeling very hopeless. And a path forward, isn't it? It is very much a path forward. We have five what we call major departments or areas of focus, and housing and homelessness is one of them. Um, we also have a, a division where, that we call data and resources, and that is usually where we meet folks when they are at, at what they believe they're, you know, their lowest. Um, we have a 24-hour resource line where people can call in, and it's 211. Any time of day, they can call in. We have community re referral specialists. They can call in, so whatever their need is, if they're in a housing crisis, um, if they need help paying their utility bills, if they don't have food for themselves or their children, clothing, um, if they're, they have a small child, an infant, no formula, no diapers, whatever that is, um, if they're feeling like they just can't go on, you know, they're having struggle with mental health crisis, they can call that number and speak to someone and get the hope that they need. And if they're a veteran, we have a special line that they can um, self-direct to and get very holistic services. So that can be workforce, um, mental health services, services for their entire family. That's called um, support services for veterans' families. Um, and that is what we call a closed loop referral system. So we have someone, case managers, who will follow them all the way through a system. And that's usually, they're usually in our system for at least three months. And what's important to know is that when you call, when you call, let's say you were calling law enforcement, 911, you're calling because you have a need. You're also allowing law enforcement to fulfill their function. When you call 211, you are calling because you need help. Right. And you are allowing somebody to help. You have an energy exchange, a, a sense of a purpose on both sides. And, and there is no shame in asking for a helping hand. It's very important. And you are, in a sense, providing a gift to somebody who, who has a desire and a need to serve and has perhaps also been in the same position themselves. Very much so. And what, what is really wonderful about this exchange is not only do you have the caller and you have the community re referral specialist, you also have 1,200 organizations right. who have become part of this system who are willing and want to help be part of the solution. And they're ready, they're ready. Yes. And, and, the, and they're not enablers. No. They're helpers. Yes. They're, they're resources here. That's what the community is about. The community is about being a community and ensuring that we all strengthen. There'll be an opportunity to give back yes. later on. But right now, if you're the person needing help, call 211. Yes, and so many people do after they've been through the process. They very much want to give back. Um, we spend a great deal of time uh, and money to make certain that those resources that we're providing people with, um, that those are accurate because what, be, what, what we know, people who call in have very limited resources themselves. And most often, if they're needing help, they're going to be relying on someone else to, to take them to the food pantry or to take them to infant crisis services or to take them somewhere. So we really can't afford to give them inaccurate information. Right. So we very much um, want to make certain that whenever they call in, we're giving them accurate information as far as the hours that a pantry is open or that a resource is available so that they do just have, you know, to make one stop. But the other thing we do, if someone should call in for utility assistance or for assistance with food, that we see what 
what the other needs are because most likely if someone is calling in for just one thing, there are other issues that need to be addressed. So if they weren't able to make a utility payment, is there a workforce issue also? Or is there, are they needing food for their family? So what are those other needs? So a typical call might last actually five minutes. They may have just called in to say, is there someone who can help me with my utility bill? We could just answer that question and give them that answer, but we also want to know what are the other underlying social determinants of need. What, what is going on here is that we're living our lives. We are going to work or we might have lost our job or we might have been unemployed for a while or some circumstance happens, an electric bill that is unexpectedly exactly. high, a fire that happens that destroys something. Um, a car a, expense, a car expense right. or, or, or a small accident or, or an illness, um, any of, of the thousand of different things that if they happen at a different time would not be an issue, right. but they're an issue now. Mm -hmm. and, and there's just no means to, to deal with that. Right. And, and, and that's the issue, right? You, you're under stress. You've been trying. You've been You've been trying to deal with with feelings that that might have backed up on you, and and you can't you can't get there. You're starting to be aware of of your own uh, inclination to self harm and cycle into depression, right. and that's really where that's not the social determinants of harm. That's daily life, mm -hmm. right? That's what we all experience, and sometimes we experience that kind of that kind of circumstance, and we need. Help and it's just not there from family. It's not there from friends. That's when the community can come together right. through you. And uh, that is our message. I even tell our staff. I tend we um, we have someone now who's going out and talking to employers. Encourage your employees to call this number. I call our employees. Please, if you don't feel comfortable talking to your supervisor or to me, please call two one one. Don't wait until you're feeling hopeless because these people who are in places to help you, they want to help. So don't wait until you're feeling hopeless or helpless. Be call because that's why we're here. Um, it's, so, it's such an easy number to call and so easy to do, but I think people, um, our society wants to make people feel like there's shame in asking for help and there isn't. Um, and it takes so little time for people to get to that place like you were talking about where you feel overwhelmed and you feel like the only, the only way out is to exit life. And we need to intervene so much more quickly than, than people allow us to. So you talked about five different programs. You named yes. two of them. Could you name the other three programs? Certainly. So um, the one which we call Data and Resources, 2 on one is just a piece of that. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece of that is we are the Census Information Center for Eastern Oklahoma. Right. So all of that data is collected at uh, the Community Service Council. And um, that's important because it informs government funding decisions. Yes, it, it does. It also informs community action. Yes. It's where uh, city councils and, and community groups get together and start to look at that data so that action can be taken to heal where healing is necessary and to move where movement is necessary. Yes, and it's very important that every person becomes part of the census and that we count as many people as we do because that is funding in all of our communities. And so we have a team that's working very hard um, with underserved populations to make certain that they realize that their voice needs to be heard and that they need to be part of this. And so we have a team um, Latinx um, and Burmese um, populations, we have teams working with them to make certain that they feel safe in this and that they know that, um, that we really want them to be part of this and, and feel part of our communities as well. So this is not a matter of, of codependence. It's a matter of teaching a man to fish or teaching a woman to fish and allowing them to become independent again, it's a temporary thing. And, and your whole service set is all about that sort of temporary nature of the help to try and get uh, help someone to move on. It's not a codependence. Yeah, oh, and you're talking about several of our programs right now um, that we have within one of our other sets, which is our Healthy 
healthy children, healthy families, and right. uh, where we do have, we have what we call promotorists or CMNUs for the Latinx and Burmese mm -hmm. populations. Um, and it's very much structured that way where we, we have certification programs right. within those and then they work um, within those communities so that the things that we all take for granted and um, if you've ever traveled somewhere outside of your comfort zone and all of a sudden you just feel helpless because you can't communicate like everyone else communicates and things that are very simple. It's like if you needed, um, if you had a cold and you're, you know, and you're somewhere else where you don't speak the language and you realize how difficult that is just to get medicine. So we work within um, the other populations to make sure that just those things like talking with their teacher, talking with their doctor, um, that you are that, empowered to actually talk with the with the teacher, even if you don't, exactly. if you have a concern about your child, you can talk with the teacher, even if you don't speak the language. You can find somebody who can act as a translator, and you are you have the right to ask. Exactly. As a matter of fact, the teacher wants to have that communication That's with the right. parent. Just getting that message across across cultures can be very very difficult, right. but it can be done. It can absolutely be done and be done very successfully, we're finding. And we are all so much more similar than we are different. And I think that's the message of the Community Service Council is how to relay that to, uh, to, all, to all the members of our community and that we make certain that they feel that. Not just that we say that, but that we make certain that that is felt throughout our communities. And so we do that through our different programs. So even with our, um, so we have the innovative data and resource piece, which is what we're talking about. Um, being a census information center, we also produce the equality indicators. So that's very well known within the Tulsa community, um, but it just shows how uh, maybe in different areas of our community, how we might could do a better job in making sure that there is equality for all people in the way um, that we handle things, whether that's through um, health care through law enforcement, many different areas that we're making sure that we're hitting those marks. And veterans is a piece that we we showed some great improvement the last year, so this will be our third year to do that. But through the data that we collect um, through many of our different programs, we are able to then adjust some of our programs. We adjust help other nonprofits see where the need is in our communities, and they can adjust programs, start new programs. The city uses our data. There are many organizations that use the data that we have so they can see, well, here's where the need's greatest. There are a lot of people calling, asking for food resources between 3 and 5 p.m., so that's when our food pantries need to be open. Um, here's the time of day when a lot of people are calling for infant crisis services. We need to make certain we are we're staffed right. more, most heavily then. What zip codes need the most help? So the data that we can provide is very critical for our communities and also throughout eastern Oklahoma. Pam Ballard, thank you so much for thank sharing you. the work of it's the Community pleasure. Service Council. Remember the 211 number yes. at need? Yes. And thank you so much for thank your you. insights. Thank you. It's my pleasure.